Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG. Today, we're going to jump into the Wayback Machine, but actually go to the future to check out a game that's been out since 2012, but is coming out in a couple months. It's Fantasy Star Online 2. This is a game that's seen release on pretty much everything under the sun and now sees a Western release coming soon for the Xbox and PC, on which this video is actually going to be based, which was the beta test this last weekend. And let's of course make sure that our aim is true. This is a free to play game that was out back when some of you guys were still getting your name written on lunch pails and is coming to the Xbox and PC as a free to play game. If you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe to me, hit the notification bell for all. If you don't like me, go out there and find some new people, maybe somebody that you've wanted to subscribe to and happen to have forgot. Graphics are up first. I think MMOs have come a long way. Look no further than, say, Black Desert's character creator and how you can quickly be seduced by those saucy, sultry hips of some seductress level 40 with more polygons on those hips than last-gen games had in their entire titles. Make no mistake, though, in that comparison, Fantasy Star Online 2 is actually that second part, that last last-gen game. So you got to make sure you understand where your expectations are for a title like this because it can look creaky in comparison. Fantasy Star does have some bright spots, though, and in one place the game does excel is the weapon and creature effects, with all manner of particles shimmering down around you as you blast away with gun blades or explosive arrow shots just as some dude leaps in and starts punching the shit out of a dragon's head, because as we all know, the easiest way to defeat a mythical dragon is orthodox stance. It's the landscape that really does look old here, though. Despite having some foliage and a nice bit of color splashes here and there, that's not something that is going to wow you, so when you jump into this, be aware of it. It is very basic in its construction. That being said, the enemy design, the character designs, the pet designs, and just the way in which everything is presented is not that bad. This is a fully vested MMO as well. It's been out for years, so enemies run the gamut from multi-eyed flying creatures to mandible-laden insects, which means one second it's going to look like a rock video anime, and the next second it's going to look like Starship Troopers had sex with a manga. And you wrap all that up with an RPG action moveset, and you have something that's actually quite legitimate in the way its presentation works. Everything is fluid. There's some complex moves that happen, and I'll get to those in a little bit. Overall, I'm actually quite impressed with how fluid it feels, even though it is an older title. We've seen games that have come out even recently, especially in the MMO genre, that have not felt as slick as this. And once again, there's a reason why this game is still so popular. When it comes to the FPS, I did have a lot of frame rate hits. This was, of course, a beta stress server test, so we don't quite know how many of those are going to end up in the actual game itself. I've always felt the Fantasy Star series looked a little bit unique compared to everything else, even when it was back when it was just a single-player role-playing game, or in its sequels when you could hump some people and have your babies run around the game world and adventure after you go and die. There were some awesome things there, and then you jump into Fantasy Star Online, and it had a unique look and presentation, and of course, it was an online system in a very unique and different feeling world than the RPGs. And we have the same thing with the second one. You just can't in any way, shape, or form expect this to feel modern because it absolutely is not. Those impressions aside, let's jump into sound, music, and voice. Hello. If you are not in a hurry at the moment, I suggest you stay where you are. For your own safety. Okay, we got to talk about sound first because I know people are going to be bringing this up. It isn't that great. The game is literally ancient and sound effects are still trapped in that more cartoony frequency heights that you would expect from arcade games than the more robust and thick examples that we have now when it comes to titles. For me, it's just a lot of ching, 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 ching. That reminds me of the good old days, but also reminds me that while sound has come a long ways, Fantasy Star in particular hasn't. A little bit like its graphics, and unfortunately where the graphics see a 4K upscale on the Xbox X, there is no such improvement on the sound. 
And that brings us to music. <laughs> okay. So this is the kind of music that when a group of friends take a trip across the cinnamon mountains to the candy corn peaks and then across the milk chocolate river into the caramel fields, everything is over the top celebratory stuff. Even when shit hits the fan in the story, it's just sort of like everyone in the game world is all, you know what, man? It's okay. The world's going to shit and the universe is falling apart, but we've got new best friends. It is always upbeat. It is forever up-tempo, and it's never downtrodden. The music is for sure an acquired taste, and I can definitely see it turning some people off, especially because many times it doesn't give a shit what's going on, on the screen. It's still playing a happy-go-lucky song as your character's just on the ground dying. It is one of those games that you can definitely feel its age with the way it plays, but overall, for a lot of people, it fits the kind of game that Fantasy Star is. And speaking of fitting in, let's talk a little bit about the voice. So you can choose English or Japanese voiceovers for this. And I did choose English, and I have to say, you know, most of the stories in this game are going to make Twin Peaks feel like an instructional booklet on eating fucking pie anyway. The stories don't really make a ton of sense, and a lot of the characters are just introduced and then removed for a while and then introduced back and forth. They try to make it sort of make sense, but it never really does. And the game's highlight has never really been about its story, which is unfortunate because that is connected to the voice. When it comes to battle and it comes to the various different characters that you interact with, they're fine, but they're no great shakes. It'll probably be something that I don't think a lot of people will even notice in the long run. I would have liked some more work on it. And that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. So you play as a member of Oracle, which is a spacefaring group who checks out new planets for potential candidates for colonizing. And you're a member of ARCS, which is the initial reaction force. And you go down to the various planets and not only beat the shit out of every natural creature down there, but also explore a backstory involving a group known as the Dark Fowls or Fells or whatever, something like that. And it really doesn't matter overall, and you can tell, because this is a game where if you've got a good grasp of what's going on, the real psych of gameplay is not really about the story. It's much about the new locations or interactions. It's looting and scooting around hub locations. It's collecting and killing harder creatures to get better items that kill harder creatures to get better items from the creatures you killed with the better items that you got from the harder creatures. And then just when you think you're done, you join up with other people. That's the name of the game here. This is an MMORPG. So you start out into the title by making a character from a race of four. Newmans, cast, humans, or did humans, which, yes, translates roughly to elves, weak-ass dwarf robots, humans, and, well, that fourth race that every single MMO tries to add to a game world to feel like J.R.R. Tolkien wouldn't roll over in their grave to smother them if the writer was somewhere nearby. Then you jump into picking major classes, with subclasses introduced around level 20. You have hunter and ranger and force and braver and bouncer and summoner. And at some point, you can literally sense when Sega gave up the ghost and just stopped giving a shit. But regardless of that, you all understand what these are. They're going to be comparisons to other games you've played with ranged and up close and defenders and tanks and magic users and so on. Now, I chose Braver. Up close, they use swords. Far away, they use a bow. And it's a good solo style weapon in class, especially since the beta had so many issues with connections, which I knew it was going to. And unfortunately, it did. But I thought, you know what? I want to play on my own. That way, if somebody else is kicked, it won't affect my game. Now, you leap into the game world. The hub is broken into various sections for things like the main quest giving area on the ship, the shopping district items in a casino to go blow some of your hard-earned ducats away on various games and hang out with some online pals that you make. The real part of the game, of course, is the worlds. To get there, you take part in a couple tutorial quests, but <laughs> don't think that the main quests are going to be much different because they aren't. Most of the game is about killing, collecting creatures, killing creatures, collecting creatures by killing them, exploring caverns by killing creatures, and caverns filled with creatures that need to be collected by being killed so you can conquer them. Occasionally, this is broken up by a main story element you can choose to watch that furthers the plot. Sometimes they're level or quest based and bound. It just depends. One thing you're going to learn right away that's vital in Fantasy Star is doubling up on stuff. We've all had that moment where you go to the grocery store and you realize the fucking electronic store is right nearby and you're like, yes, two for one. That's Fantasy Star and the way you should handle the missions at all times. If there's a main quest, check all the side collection quests and see if they overlap so you can hit two for one. When you jump down into the main worlds, choosing locations and a level of difficulty is allowed as well. Combat itself when you run around is handled via a fairly simple system with three face buttons able to have equipped weapons move sets applied to them and then holding the trigger to get another three move sets across those. Weapons can also be somewhat hot swapped by holding up or down on the digital pad to switch between other items your class can use. Now this is called the palette system. The sword is the brush, your skills are the paints, and the world is your canvas. Basic attacks usually hold or build up your photon energy and photon is sort of like your magic ability or your skill ability. 
When it comes to the speed and the way the game is handled, it is much faster than a lot of MMOs and sits somewhere in the action game slash Monster Hunter combat speed area and feel, depending on the weapons you use. Now, depending on those weapons, also timing is a factor with a red timing circle that flashes on your character to indicate that hitting another attack in time will increase the next attack's damage. The only issue I had with all this is that with all the other fancy attacks and projectiles and crazy colors, I had a strangely difficult time sometimes seeing that in all the hubbub. And that might have been simply because I was looking all the way around me at all times. Each class has tons of attack types and weapons also. And I adjusted those as I jumped into various different classes with different characters to sort of see what worked. If you want to sit back and summon creatures to battle for you, you can do that. If you want to sit back and shoot them with bows, you can do that. If you want to get up close and personal, you can do that. The game has a great deal deal of flexibility and works quite well. Now, once you've completed a mission objective, which could be killing the boss, clearing the area, or killing some enemies, it allows you to transport back to the ship to turn those in and get new quests. Traveling back and forth, buying items, going up levels, which raises a huge number of attributes from HP to resistances and much more. Also, different weapons leveling up as well is the main crux of the game. You also get skills that are both active and passive for each class that you can raise up with skill points. One nice thing about Fantasy Star is it is a vested game. It is a title that's been out for so long. So joining up with others, if you decide to, is not that hard. They have a sort of mini version of clans. You can also go it alone, though, and have AI fighters who will fight with you. What's odd here, though, is while alive, the AI did pretty okay. But And this is probably to stop some kind of cheating. If you die, the AI will do nothing. It'll just sit there and heal itself over and over and over. It'll resurrect you, yes, if it has some resurrection ability. But otherwise, it'll just sit there and soak a ton of damage and heal itself over and over and over. And they won't do any attacking at all. It's odd, but again, I assume it's to stop you from dying and the AI beating a boss or a bad guy then having you come back to life and basically using them as meat shields. It just feels a little bit weird. While the game does have a story, much of the title is laying out in the same way as Monster Hunter, though, where the main story is really nothing more than a skeleton compared to the meat of the game, which is upgrading your armor, weapons, leveling up your skills, and changing and moving around classes. Side quests have you explore or collect items for clients in the game world as well with things like harvesting and fishing added as activities once you've leveled up a bit. One of the issues I really did have with the game, though, is that the HUD is absolutely messy. It is a fucking disaster. There are ways to adjust some of what you're seeing on the screen, but it never works exactly like it should. And some of the aspects that should have been and could have been there for you to be able to remove were not allowed to be removed, which absolutely sucked. One thing that doesn't suck, though, is the amount of longevity in this game. It's huge. It's got all of the acts in it when it comes out here in the next couple months, I think, or weeks. It just really has a shit ton of content, which I think is great for anybody who wants to jump in. But that brings us to one last bit about this. Microtransactions. This is a free-to-play game, and they're going to make some money somehow. They promised that these were cosmetic. We'll see how that goes, but I just wanted to inform you. And that brings us to fun factor. First, again, you got to remember this is, is neck deep in its cycle, meaning it's like any MMO when you jump in many years after it's starting. It's like a Michael Bay cut of 100 commercials all in the span of 11 freaking seconds. Just you can do this or that. Or you can go shopping and fishing and gather some stuff and go fish and shop and fish with shoppers and shop with fishers and then sell it all. Ignoring that scatterbrain momentum for a moment. The game is insanely fun. Even if I was switching classes and characters to really dive into stuff, so getting the timing wasn't perfect for me as I was adjusting things so often, the game was addicting as hell. Feels very polished when it comes to the cycle of battling and then going back and forth. And yes, some of those quests can actually be short, very short. Now, they're not anthem short, but they're short enough that you actually notice them. But to me, at least, I always knew exactly what was going to go on. There was no real surprise when I was sent back or told that I could go back. And one of the nice things about the game is just because you have finished a quest doesn't mean you have to. You can still explore and go around and kill more monsters and gain more experience if you need to. The combat and that consistent moving forward of the enemy variety is insane. And it's been ages since I visited the very first game. I barely remember anything about it. But I have to say, the combat is enjoyable. And while it's never really had the tenacity of Monster Hunter, that nut crunching difficulty, well, unless you purposely set it up in this game, it has a ton of content and variety. And if you're an old fan of really crunching down the numbers on various character classes and deciding which weapon needs what and upgrading what and getting this particular thing for your character, the game has a ton of that. And again, you can see the longevity in what you're experiencing now. 
So I want to know what you guys think. You'll be jumping into this in the next couple, let's see, weeks or months. Again, I didn't check the exact release time on this. I'd like to know what you guys think of it when you get a chance. So when you do get to play it, if you do decide to jump into it, uh, you know, feel free to post back on here if I haven't posted another video about it. I'm really interested in what people think. This is a title that probably will go somewhat under the radar because it's Xbox and PC only. It's a free to play title, but it is Fantasy Star, which I think adds a lot of IP fandom to it. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch and Facebook and Reddit. I would love for you to do so, especially Twitter. I, I rarely push that, but if you guys get a chance, follow me on Twitter. And we've got Anchor and Spotify. That's where almost everything that I do is posted and uploaded. So if you want some content, you can go there. Not only are the podcasts uploaded there, as well as on the Twitch channel, ACG on Twitch, but you will also see some various behind the scenes go up there on audio as well. And you can become a patron. Patron's one of the best places. We have an amazing Discord. We have a bunch of new people this month alone, and it helps me continue to give you guys videos that aren't filled with sponsored bull crap. I love for you guys to jump in. It is a great community to sit and talk. So if I found you a, a game that you were surprised about or saved you a little bit of money by warning you away from a bad one, come on in, throw a few ducats, and join one of the greatest groups in gaming. Peace out, and enjoy the rest of your week.